Hi everyone, this is Olivia from Lightspeed Golf, and in this video, we're gonna look at creating and editing annual memberships, as well as how to sell annual memberships. So let's get started. Always on the settings tab on the left-hand side menu, let's head on over to memberships, which is under subscriptions. Now, as you can see, I've already got some memberships created from my previous season. And if I wanted to create some brand new ones, I could just go ahead and click create, give it a name, set that price, and don't forget to designate a player type that will be eligible to purchase this membership. And we want to select the tax rate that is appropriate for this item. So go ahead and set that up and click save when you are done. Now, in the event that you've already got some memberships created like myself and you want to reuse them or update them for this upcoming season, we can edit that quite easily just by clicking on the membership. So today we're doing annual. Let's go ahead and click on annual membership. Now, uh, my prices are going to jump by $100 this year. So I'm going to set that to be $1,800 now. And as you can see with the price change, I'm getting a message, which is just letting me know that any... Uh, member that already has this annual membership sold to them, the price that we sold it to them will not be impacted until the membership renews. Okay. So $1,800, which is my new price will not be charged to members who already have this existing membership on their profile until their membership is renewed. Okay. So once we're done making that edit update, we can go ahead and hit save. And as I can see on the right hand side under price, my price for the annual membership has been updated. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like when we sell the annual membership. So heading on over to the customers tab on the left hand side, let's pick a customer to sell this to. I'm going to go ahead and look at Melody. Okay. I could see in her subscriptions tab that she's got no active memberships and I could see that she's currently set as a public player type. This is the default player type on my uh, course. And because Melody currently doesn't have any active subscriptions, she is set to the default player type. But once her membership kicks in, she will automatically change into the member player type that's associated with the membership I'm selling her. Okay. So let's go ahead and click sell. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go to that drop down menu over here that says add and go ahead and click membership and choose the subscription we want to sell her. So I'm going to sell her an annual membership. Now, if you draw your attention to this little black arrow over here, this is where I can make some modifications specific to Melody. Okay. If I want to change the price even further, if I want to give her a bit of a discount, some special uh, preferential treatment, I could do that here. And whatever I update in the price and discount settings over here will not actually impact the configurations in the mm, subscription uh, settings. It'll just modify the sale specifically for Melody. Okay. So yeah, that little black arrow is a nice little trick. And let's have a look at the schedule over here. Guys, these start and end dates are very important because they are going to dictate the validity of the membership, okay? The period during which this membership is active and valid. So you'll remember that we're selling an annual membership. We do have to tell the system how to set this membership up now. Let's put it on a yearly plan. So if Melody's membership is going to start on March 11th, let's say, uh, 2024, well, naturally it's going to end on March 11th, 2025. So let's go ahead and set that end date to reflect the one year membership. Now, instead of clicking this arrow to the right several times, I could just click on the month over here and select March. Um, and jump on over to March 11th, 2025. So now the system knows that this is a uh, annual membership. I've just given it the pattern um, and the schedule that it's going to replicate should I turn this on to auto renew. So look what I've just done. I've toggled on the auto renew button and I can see that the system knows that this is an auto renew annually. The next renewal date will be March 11, 2025. Okay, so very important if you want this to renew annually, we really need to pay attention to those certain end dates. Okay, if I change this to be March 27th, for example, the system will not recognize this as an annual renewal. It'll recognize it as a membership that is 382 days long. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure we're setting those start and end dates appropriately. So once I'm happy, I've got the auto renew on, I can see that it's annual. The next renewal date's March 11, 2025. Everything looks good for Melody. Let's go ahead and finalize that sale. 
So I've got three payment options for Melody over here. I've got the credit card option, I've got the on account option, and I've got the register option. Now, if I were to select credit card, this will automatically charge Melody's credit card, which she has on file with us, as you can see. And if I were to put this on account, it'll add her uh, membership fee to her account statements in conjunction with her house account. Okay, this is in the event that your course is utilizing the house account function. Uh, basically, Melody would be billed on her monthly statements in conjunction with her house account billing. Okay. So those are two options to charge Melody. We could also charge this by putting it on the register and finalizing that in retail, which we can look at momentarily. Um, and that would typically be for a payment option, such as paying by check or cash or something of that nature. But I want to uh, just draw your attention back to the credit card and on account methods. What you'll notice with these two payment methods is that I have the option of actually changing the billing cycle and partitioning it. Okay, so what that means is um, I could actually split Melody's payment, her membership fee, into 12 installments. If I want to, um, you know, charge her monthly, that's a great payment, you know, plan for Melody. If she doesn't want to pay everything all up front, well, we can actually partition that into however many parts we want. We could even just do six months. Um, you know, it'll really calculate the installments based on the division that we're giving it in the partitioning window over here. So as you could see, I've got her billing ending, uh, you know, next February. However, what you'll also notice is that Melody's billing cycle is now going to start today when in reality, her subscription is only going to start on March 11th. Now, we really do want to be careful to have the billing cycle kind of in conjunction with the starting and ending dates of the membership, okay? We really don't want to exceed the window during which the membership is valid, okay? I don't really want Melody to be paying off her membership kind of before or after the starting and ending dates uh, during which her membership is valid and active, okay? It's just much easier for payments, for billing to reconcile. It's just less clunky. So when you're setting that billing cycle, we kind of always want to start it more or less in line with the starting and ending date of the subscription in question. So as you can see, I've now actually started her billing to be in conjunction with the first day of the active membership, okay? March 11, 2024 on the billing cycle, March 11, 2024 on the start day of the membership. And as you can see, I've partitioned it into 12 different payments. It's gonna bring us all the way to February 11, 2025. And that's a nice payment plan that really falls in line with the scheduling of her auto renewal uh, next March. Okay, next March is when it'll auto renew and we could set a different payment plan, payment strategy starting then. Okay, you can do this partitioning payment strategy on credit card or on account. However, as I mentioned on the register, we actually don't have the option of selling a subscription on auto renew when we use the register checkout method. Okay, the register is a one-time payment only. If I want Melody's subscription to remain on auto renew, I cannot put it on the register. Okay, the system needs some kind of a payment reference to know how to charge the renewed membership. Okay, so for the purpose of today, I'll just take that off auto renew uh, just so I can show you what that looks like when we finalize on the register. But as I did mention, uh, you know, credit card and on account, really important to look at the partitioning schedule. If you're going to be partitioning, starting of that billing cycle, making sure that's more or less in conjunction with the starting and end date of the uh, active subscription dates. Okay. For today, let's go ahead and pay on the register. We're gonna go ahead and hit save when we're ready. That's gonna take us over to the POS retail screen and I could go ahead and make a payment for Melody. I could put you know, $1,000 on check and then if she wants to pay the rest cash, I can you know, pay that balance as well. I could also just choose one single payment method if I want to, uh, whatever makes sense for the customer. Once you're ready to finalize, let's go ahead and hit finish sale. And as you can see, it's now generated a retail receipt for the sale. Melody now has the status of upcoming next to the membership in her subscriptions tab, which basically tells me that the membership has been sold and paid for, but is not currently active. And I could tell that the start and end date are going to be active from March 11, 2024 to March 11, 2025. 
okay? And if you did want to see what that sale looks like, uh, you know, the history of that transaction, you could go ahead and click on that uh, icon over here that says show in POS, and it'll pull up the original sale that was done on the register. Okay, and once actually March 11 rolls around, you'll see that Melody's player type will revert to the annual member type. Okay, folks, so there you have it. That is how you set up, uh, edit, and create and sell a uh, annual membership. And just always want to be careful of those uh, starting and ending dates as well as the billing cycle, especially if you're going to be partitioning payments. Okay, thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll be in touch soon with some more videos and tips and tricks on how to get your course set up and running for the start of your season.